Greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul. I'd like to welcome you today to the internet broadcast of Albany Family Worship Center. Albany Family Worship Center is located at 3024 Kensington Court in Albany, Georgia. Our service times are Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship. I hope this message encourages you today and draws you ever closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day and always remember this, Jesus loves you. you know, usually when, when I preach a message... I have a base scripture that I go with. Well, this morning I don't. Because there's, there's four different subjects I, I want to talk to you about this morning. And, and it, they're scattered through the New Testament. And, and the topic of the message today is the four greats. The four greats. There, there, there's four things that we need to understand from the New Testament that is the greatest thing that could happen in our life. Two of the things I'm going to talk about are exclusively uh, for born-again believers. The first two greats I'll talk about is exclusively for born-again children of God. And the last two is for the lost and for the children of God. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer before we begin our message this morning. Father, as we come before you right now, we want to tell you how much we love you. And God, how much we need you in our life, God. And Father, we praise you today, and we give you glory. And Father God, I pray today, right now, under the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit, that he would use these words of yours to impact our lives today, to change us, to mold us, and make us into the men, the women, the boys and girls that you want us to be. Holy Spirit, right now give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive what you have in store for us this day. Draw us ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, as I stand before you right now, God, I humble myself under your mighty hand right now, and I ask you to take control of me. That Holy Spirit, you would let your words be my words, your thoughts my thoughts, your love in my heart, Jesus, that it flows out and touches Everyone in this room, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. I love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. The first great I want to talk to you this morning is this. I want to talk to you about the great commandment. You know, uh, there, was, there was a certain scribe or a certain law. You come to Jesus, and the Bible says that he asked him a question tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? You know, there's a lot of times we argue within ourselves or we see things in a different light than what our Lord wants us to see. But there's certain things that he wants us to understand today. There is one commandment, there is one part of his word that is greater than any other, and it is this. I want you to listen to it from Matthew 22. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say to you is this, what the Lord calls us to do, he calls us to put Jesus, to put our God, to put our Savior first in our life before everything else. He is to be the number one priority. That is the greatest commandment of all, is to put Jesus first. And I've learned this, uh, my brothers and sisters, that when we put Jesus Christ first, when we make him the priority of our life, when everything in our life revolves around Jesus, Jesus then steps in and lines everything in our life up. Amen? Do you understand? 
understand what I'm saying? In other words, he takes control. He steps in, and he begins to lead, guide, and direct, and things begin to work out. Things begin to happen. Things begin to change. We see miracles take place. We see God's provision take place. We see temptation uh, be defeated. We see these things begin to take place all because we had enough faith, all because we had enough trust, all because we had enough love that we put Jesus first. If you believe that this morning, give God a hand clap of praise. You know, so oftentimes people wonder, well, why, why ain't God doing this for me? Or why ain't God doing that for me? Where's God at when I need him? Well, let me ask you this. Are you, are you putting God first? Are you loving him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind? Or is there other things in your life that come first before Jesus? Think about that now. Because there's only two people that can answer that question. That's you. And Jesus. You know, oftentimes in our life, we regulate Jesus, if I could use this expression, to our hip pocket. And the only time we take him out is when we need him. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? People, people act like they could take or they could leave him. Well, you can't do that. If you are going to be the child of God that he wants you to be, you must walk by faith and not by sight. You must put Jesus first. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. Amen? Because that is the first and greatest commandment for the child of God. To trust complete. To get, listen, listen, I had to put it this way. To give Jesus all authority control, and carry your life. Let me tell you something, church. I want you to hear me this morning. Uh, I was 39 years old when I got saved. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to be honest with you. I made a mess of my life for 39 years. It seemed like everything I'd done just led me deeper and deeper and deeper into that pit. And it wasn't till the night that I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. It wasn't until that night that I put him first, that I gave him control, that I surrendered all authority and control and care of my life, and he began to lead, guide, and direct my every thought, step, word, and deed. Did, did things begin to change? Amen. Has it been a rose garden? Had it be, has it been a smooth ride? No, it has not. But I've learned this. When he's in control, I don't have to worry. Amen. When he's in control, I don't have to struggle because he takes care of my needs. He fights my battles. Oh, somebody got to get in on this this morning and give God some praise. Amen. When you're willing, he's willing. And when you trusted in him completely, guess what? He takes care of the consequences. He steps in and he takes response. Oh, is it? Am I getting through to somebody this morning? Say amen. He takes the responsibility. Amen. You know, Jesus said, look at the flowers of the field. Uh, and God clothes them. Look at the birds of the air, how God feeds them. And he said this, who of you by worry? can add one cubit to your stature. What, what good does it do you to worry? What good does it do you to walk around wondering what you're going to do when you see no way, when if you would let God have control, when you would stop worrying, when you would stop doubting, when you would trust in Him completely, God would step into the midst of your situation and He would change it. Amen? Am I getting through to somebody this morning? Say amen. Because, see, that's the kind of God he is. The Bible says this. Paul writes this in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19. He said, my God. Somebody say, my God. My God shall, shall. Somebody say, shall. Do you understand what that word shall means? I'm going to get, make it real simple. It means he's going to do it. Amen? It means he's going to do it. He said, my God shall supply for your need. Somebody say need. Now, you know what? A lot of people don't understand that word. That means he's going to give you what you need when you need it. Amen? You might be praying for a million dollars right now. 
But you know what? God might look at you and say, well, you don't need that right now. But he sends you what you need for that moment. Amen? I want a Ford F-250, four-door power stroke diesel. Amen? But you know what I need? I need that little old two-door F-150 I'm driving out there. Amen? Because it gets me where I'm going. God has given me. God has given me. Somebody say, God will give you. God has given me what I need need amen he said my God shall supply for your needs according to his riches in glory Jesus Christ said these words he said my grace is sufficient for you amen God's grace is greater than any situation you'll ever face amen God's grace is greater than any need you'll ever face in your life and when you trust in him completely when you walk in that oh I'm about to get happy up here this morning amen when you trust in that great commandment and you love the Lord your God with all your heart all your strength and all you, your soul let me tell you what God will do for you he will pour out his grace on you can somebody give him praise in the house of God today because that great commandment is true he loves you he loves you and he wants listen he wants to mm, he wants to take care of you do you get that listen parents listen listen mothers fathers listen to me do you want to take care of your children do you want to give them what is best for them? Do you want them to have what they need when they need it? Do you think the almighty, powerful God, Jehovah himself, Jesus Christ, wants any less for you today? The one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the one that's got all the power and the glory, the one that's got all the authority, don't you think he will give you what you need when you need it according to his sufficient grace to Today, oh, somebody, come on! See, that's the kind of God He's in. When you put Him first, listen. I'm not talking about second, or third, or fourth. I'm talking about first, numero uno. When you let Him become the preeminent one in your life, that word preeminent means first, first in line in your life. When you do that, he sees your needs according to his riches and glory. The second great we want to talk about this morning is this. And that is the great commission. The great commission in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Listen to this. And Jesus came and spoke unto them saying, all power. You know, we just talked about that great commandment with serving a powerful God. And here Jesus is saying, All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Listen now. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. We as born-again, blood-bought children of the Most High God, we have one main responsibility in our life, and that's to tell people about Jesus. Amen? That is to be His witnesses in all the world. Amen. We're to tell if we don't do anything but let people know Jesus loves you. I try to tell people that all the time. Jesus loves you. People need to know that fact because do you know it, I was 39 years old before I realized something. Jesus loves me. And I had gone to church as a child. My mom and daddy had taken me to church. And it was, they were Bible teaching churches, but they had me believing, and I believe a majority of people are this way today, they had me believing that God was, a, was, some, was some tyrannical dictator in heaven standing there with a lightning bolt in his hand waiting for me to put one toe over the line so he could strike me down with that lightning bolt. 
They, they had me believing you had to do this to be saved. You had to do that to be saved. If you did this, you're going to hell. If you did that, you're going to hell. You got to be a good boy. You got to be a good girl or Jesus won't love you. My Bible does not tell me that. My Bible tells me that there's only one way to please God. There's only one way to make God happy and that is by faith. Amen. And those that come to him must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. It's not about me doing anything anything but it's about everything Jesus has done for me and I want to tell people about that old old story about that Savior come down from glory about the one that shed his blood on Calvary to save a wretch like me all because of one thing he loved me can somebody give him praise in the house of God are you telling people about Jesus if you were a blood-bought, born-again child of God today, you ought to be so excited about your relationship with Jesus that you're telling that, you, that you'll witness to a stomp if it'll stand still long enough. Amen? I'll never forget, right after I got saved and called to preach, let me tell you, I'm about not pass a stop sign on Main Street. I'd get out and preach. Amen? Because I was excited, and I still am today. I love to see people saved. I love to see people come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I love to see people baptized in the Holy Ghost. I love to see God's people get excited about what he's doing. But I love to tell people about Jesus. Amen. And Jesus commands us everywhere we go and everything we do and everyone we meet, we should tell them in some little way about Jesus. Amen. We're to, we're, to, we're to make the see, disciples beget disciples. If you're a disciple of Jesus, if you're a follower of Jesus, you ought to try to be making more followers of Jesus. But so many people today have forgotten that that is a responsibility of the child of God. They leave it up to the pastor. They leave it up to the evangelist. They leave it up to the Sunday school teachers. Well, guess what? It is all of our responsibility. Not only is it mine as a pastor and an evangelist, it's yours as a child of God. That everywhere you go, everything you do, you should emulate Jesus so people will see your life as a living testimony, as a living a sermon to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done in your life. Amen? We need to get more excited about Jesus. I'm, I, I guarantee you this, some of y'all get excited about ball games. We got any sports fans in here? How about, how about car, you, you, I bet when you're watching a ball game, whether it be a football game or a baseball game or a basketball game, and your team's winning, I guarantee you sitting in that living room hooping and hollering, amen? You clapping your hand. Come on now. Talk to the preacher this morning. You clapping your hand, and guess what you're doing? you making a straight fool out yourself sitting there. Because you know what? Them folks can't hear you on that TV. Them folks can't hear you. But yet and still, here you are. Amen? Here you are. And some of you might be right. I've seen people. Listen. I'm sorry. I know, I know, that, I know there's a lot of race fans out there. And, and, and please don't get me wrong, but r r r race cars have no have nothing. I, I, I just don't get off on that watching the car go round and round and round the racetrack. That don't do nothing for me, amen? But I know people that get excited about that. They will sit there and they will cheer on their favorite driver. And look, that, there's nothing wrong with that, amen? But you know what? We ought to get that excited about Jesus as we do about sports and we do about race driving, amen? We ought to be so excited about Jesus that every time we come into his house, we come into his house shouting, amen? We come into his house with praise, amen? Every time we meet somebody on the street, we ought to be telling that, hey, let me tell you about a friend of mine his name is Jesus and he loves you today and he wants to change your life forever today amen we ought to be carrying out that great commission because it is part of our responsibility as a child of God am I making sense to you this morning say amen we need to get excited but you know we, we, we're well preacher what if they think I'm some kind of holy roller what, what if they think I'm some kind of Bible thumper? 
Well, guess what? Only thing you are just getting excited about the one that loves you, amen, the one that gives your, give his life for you. If people want to call you a holy roller, let them do it. If they want to call you a Bible thumper, let them do it because you know what you really are? You are a blood-bought, born-again child of God, and you're excited about your relationship with Jesus. Can somebody praise him in the house of God today? We need to get excited Quit acting like it's a... Mm, whew, calm down, Bobby. You know, so oftentimes we act like it's a chore to serve the Lord. Come on now. Do, 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 I see people putting their heads down. They ain't looking up. Look up here now. I'm just being honest with you. That's oftentimes we act like it's a chore to serve the Lord. We act like it's a chore. We act like it bothers us to have to share our testimony with somebody. Let me tell you something. Don't stand still. I'll share my testimony with you in a minute because I love Jesus. Amen? I love what he's done in my life. I, I, I want people to know about it because, you know, the, the, the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God, is exciting in itself, but, but when you realize that that Word of God is all about Jesus, that ought to really fire you up, amen? And I want people to know. I, everywhere I go, I want people to know about Jesus, amen? And not only did Jesus tell us to go ye therefore uh, into all the world and teach all nations, he also told us in Acts 1-8, but ye shall receive power. See, that, that's, 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 one thing, that's one thing a lot of people in the church are missing today, and that's power. And what power is that? Holy Ghost power. See, the day you get saved, the Holy Ghost come to live with you, come to live in your heart. And, and the problem is he wants to empower you because, see, he'll make you bold. Amen? He'll make you bold. He'll give you what you need. He, not only will he give you the boldness, but he'll give you the words to tell people about Jesus. And Jesus said, and you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost, somebody say Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost come upon you. See, the day you get saved, you got it. Somebody say, I got it. You got everything you need. You are given the measure of faith. You're given the Holy Ghost. You're given everything you need to be a bold witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. The problem is we won't step out and do it. Who quiet in the house of God? We just won't take off and do it. Well, preacher, I, 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 I don't know how to witness. You know how to talk, don't you? Hello? You know how to carry on a conversation? Can you read Scripture? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. If you, know, if you can learn that, you can, you can witness. You can tell, because that's the gospel. Those two, those two verses, John 3, 16 and 17, are the gospel. They tell people what's going on. They tell, it, it tells people what's going on in your life. Amen? And you just got to be with, you just got to be willing. You got to receive that power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the other most part of the world. Now look here. God does not expect you to run out and buy a plane ticket or buy a boat ticket and go to South America and become a missionary. Uh, what he expects you to do is start witnessing the people in your own home. To start witnessing the people in your own neighborhood. To start, to start witnessing the people on the same street you live on. To start witnessing the people you meet in the grocery store. To start witnessing the people you meet at Walmart or at Kmart. To start witnessing to those around you. Amen? And let me tell you something. When you pray and ask God to, to set up a divine appointment between you and someone else, you know what he'll do? He'll do it. And then he'll give you everything you need to be that witness for him. You see, we should be the hands and arms and feet and legs of the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth. You know, you know what the church is called? The church is called the body of Christ. 
And we should be his arms and his legs and his hands and his feet here on this earth. We should, we should be the ones that God, we should be willing to let God use us to reconcile people. Amen? To reconcile people to him. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 21, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Listen, we ought to be so excited about God reconciling us through Jesus Christ that we want everybody else to be reconciled too. We want everybody else to be saved too. Amen. And hath given us, somebody say he's talking to me, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you instead in Christ did be ye reconciled to God you see, we need to be letting people know, hey, God wants, Jesus wants to forgive you today. Jesus loves you enough that he wants to change your life forever if you'll just let him. Because see, it's all about free will choice. See, you can't make anybody get saved. You can't make anybody choose Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But you know what? You can compel them. You can give them the opportunity. We should be his witnesses and carry out his great commission here on this earth. And the third, and the third grade is this, the great question. And I think, we, I think this is not only for lost people, but it's also for the church because we need to make up our mind today who Jesus is to us. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? We need, we need to make sure who Jesus is in our life. It says in Matthew 16, 13 through 16, when Jesus came unto the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, Listen now, But whom do you say that I am? You know, it's easy to go along with the crowd. Hello. It's easy not to rock the boat. It's easy to repeat things that we've heard. It's easy to emulate acts we've seen. But it's something else to make up our mind today as to whom Jesus is in our life. Because, see, it's a, it's a personal relationship. Uh, Peter, Peter told Jesus this. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. See, the other disciples, they, they say, Well, some people say that, that you're John the Baptist, or, or you Elijah, or, or you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. See, they was going along with what the crowd said. But Peter, good old Peter, he said, Thou art the Christ. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. See, Peter had made up his mind who Jesus was. And, 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 and he, he made that bold statement of faith. Church, I'm telling you today, you got to make up your mind personally who Jesus is to you. Because you know what? It's not about what other people believe. You know, we're quick to jump on the bandwagon of what other people believe. But, but that's not what it's about with Jesus. We, it's not about what other people believe or don't believe about Jesus. It's about what you believe about Jesus. It is a personal relationship between you and the Savior. Amen? It's between you and Him. It's not between you and your spouse. It's not between you and your parents or your grandparents. It's not between you and your best friend. It's not between you and the rest of the church. It's between you and Jesus. Do you understand that? And you need to make up your mind today. Who Jesus is to you. Jesus said in John 3, 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned. 
In other words, when you trust completely in Jesus Christ, when you make up your mind that Jesus Christ is your Savior, that Jesus Christ is the one and only begotten Son of God, you will not face the penalty of sin in your life because He forgives you. Do you understand that today? He forgives you. You get a brand new start. He doesn't care where you've been. He doesn't care what you've done. He forgives you when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Amen? Do you hear what I'm saying? And it's a personal relay, and you need to make that decision today. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Think about that now. If Jesus was to come back today to take his church home, would you go or would you stay? Think about that. Well, guess what? You, you can remedy that today. If you have doubts about that, you can remedy that day by just saying, Lord, forgive me a sinner. I repent, Lord. I turn from sin and self and I turn to you. And I ask you to forgive me, Lord, and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Right now, by faith, I surrender all authority, control, and care of my life to you. And right then and there, you're born again a child of God. No question. He doesn't ask you any questions. He doesn't ask you. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't make you fill out a questionnaire. You know, the, the, when we opened up the, the Good Samaritan shelter yesterday for the storm, the city gave me a bunch of forms. And, uh, and, 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 and I think the first family to come, I, I helped, I filled out the form for them. And I got to look at that thing, and he said, you know what? This ain't what it's about. This is, it's not about filling out these forms. It's about helping people. And see, Jesus, you don't have to fill out any forms with Jesus. You don't have to fill out, listen, you don't have to, you don't have to fill out a roll application with Jesus. Only thing you got to do is cry out to him. For the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you need to ask yourself today, you need to make sure today that you have the right answer to, to, to what Jesus asked Peter, whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Can somebody give him praise in the house today? Amen. And finally, I know some of you have been waiting on this one. Finally, be careful. Paul said finally and preach four more chapters. Amen. But finally today, I want to talk to you about the great love. And I've used this scripture off and on through this message. I want to use it today in closing. Because there's one thing today. Jesus loves you. If you don't remember anything else from this message today, you remember that. Jesus loves you. Jesus said, no greater love has anyone than this, than to lay down his life for a friend. Jesus proved how much he loved you when he died on the cross for you. And, and again, I quote John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That means God loved you. Hello? That he gave his only begotten son. See, see God loving you is what, it's what was the cause of salvation. That he gave his only son. See, that's the, that's the price. That's the only cost of salvation. Didn't, your salvation doesn't cost you a thing. Because God's paid the price. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him. See, that, everybody listen to me say amen. That is the only condition of salvation is just trust in Jesus. Now listen to me. I, I, want you to, I want you to answer this question in your heart right now. Do you trust Jesus? Do you trust Jesus? Have you given him control? Do you trust him enough to say, Lord, here I am. Take me. Do you love him today? Do you trust him today? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not pass. In other words, you won't die. Oh, your body might wear out. But who you are never dies. It lives forever with Jesus, amen, in the kingdom of heaven. And see, that's, that's love. See, as I said a while ago, Jesus doesn't care where you've been. He doesn't care what you've done. And I guarantee you, if we was to write down, listen now, if we was to write down some of the things that we've done in our life, because listen, 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 
all of us can say this. I'm the chief of all sinners. See, I know where I come from. I know what I've done. And if it, if it had been, if, if I had to make the decision when I asked the night I asked God to save me, you know what I'd have told me? Sorry, sucker. You ain't good enough. But he didn't do that. That night I called on the name of Jesus, August 23rd of 1999. Jesus didn't look at me and said, you too dirty to come in here, boy. Jesus looked at me and opened his arms this wide and said, I love you. Come in. I want to save you. And he did. See, he doesn't care where you've been. He don't care what you've done. The only thing he cares about is where you're going. That's all he cares about. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Did you hear that? And do you know what sin, do you, do you actually, do you want me to define the word S-I-N to you today? Not sins, S-I-N-S, because sins, plural, are symptoms of sin, singular. S-I-N, sin is nothing more than this. The disobedience and the rejection of God's will in your life. Hello? And you know what God's will is for your life today? To be saved. To be born again, a child of God. To come into a relationship, a personal, a deep, personal, and intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God is salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you deserve salvation today? No. Just like I didn't. But that, that's, that's, God still wants to save you today. God still wants to change your life today. The Bible says that we're saved by grace. Grace is nothing more than God's unmerited favor towards an undeserving sinner. None of us deserve salvation. But God freely gives. We're saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. God loves you today. Do you, do you get that? God loves you today. And he proved it when Jesus died on the cross. He proved it when that whip hit the back of the Lord Jesus Christ. He proved it. When he walked up Mount Calvary. He proved it when they laid him down on that old rugged cross. He proved it when they drove the nails through his hands and feet. He proved it as he hung there. The one that was sinless. He proved his great love. But God commanded his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do you understand what that word commanded means? It means God loves you on purpose. Despite yourself. Despite myself. God loves you. And he proved it. 1 John 4, 9 through 10 says, In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be a propitiation, a sacrifice, a redemption for our sins. Well, the, the question is this today. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved from the penalty of sin in my life? Number one, you just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. That when you believe, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ. For with the heart one believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I need to ask you this morning before we close. Have you done that? Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. Have you said, Lord Jesus, forgive me a sinner. 
Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. Take control of my life. And if you do that this morning, you'll change your life forever. You'll be born again a child of God. It said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You become a born again, blood-bought child of the Most High God. Amen. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. There's nobody looking around. This is your time right now. I'm going to ask the most important question you'll ever hear in your entire life, and that is this. Do you know Jesus Christ today is your Lord and Savior? Have you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, that He died for you, that He was buried and rose from the grave on the third day? If you want to be saved today, if you want to be born again today, very, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. I just want you to very quickly raise your hand. Raise your hand in there and, and, and bring it down. Very quickly, just raise your hand and bring it down. I want to pray with you right now. Just very quickly raise your hand and put it down. There may be some of you in here today, you've been saved, but you've fallen away from the Lord. And you want to come back today. And you don't know how to do that. I'm going to tell you how to do that. You just ask it. And he'll restore you today. Just like the prodigal son. He will restore you today. If that's you, I just want you to slip your hand very quickly in there. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just very quickly raise your hand and bring it down. I want to pray with you today. I want everybody in this sanctuary to say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord, so I can stand before you above reproach and receive your mercy and grace. Restore me, Lord. Renew me, Lord, to a right relationship with you. Right now, by faith, I surrender all authority, control, and care of my life to you. I love you, Jesus. Amen and amen. And amen. We're going to take a few minutes. All heads are still bowed. All eyes are still closed. We're going to open up these altars this morning. If you need to come and pray, I want you to come. I want you to come and kneel down and, and pray. If you need someone to pray with you, I'll pray with you today. If you need hands laid on you today, I will lay hands on you today. The Bible said those of you that are sick and suffering, you're to come to the elders of the church that anoint you with oil. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. These altars are open. If you need to come, won't you come? Won't you come? Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul again. I hope you enjoyed today's message. It has encouraged and drawn you ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there may be some of you out there today that's made a decision of faith. That is the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's so simple to do today. The Bible teaches us that if we'll just confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you can call upon him right now by saying this simple prayer of faith. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. Right now, Lord, I turn from sin and self, and I turn to you, Jesus, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, I give you all authority, control, and care of my life. Be my Lord and Savior forevermore. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you just become a blood-bought, born-again child of God. And we would love to hear your decision here at Albany Family Worship Center. And here's how you can contact us. You can write us at Albany Family Worship Center, 3024 Kensington Court, Albany, Georgia, 31721. You can send us an email, and our email address is my afwc at gmail.com that's myafwc at gmail.com or you can call us at 229-434-0342 we're looking forward to hearing from you today and we would love for you to come and visit we'd love to meet you and the family have a blessed day and always remember this jesus loves you <laughs>